What is your path to Dharma? It has been a week. How about it? It has just been heavy. The energy has been wild. Yeah, it really has. It's been a couple of weeks. It's been a couple honestly. Of weeks. Yeah. We were talking about this on the way to work this morning. Um, maybe 5% of people in the United States believe astrology is real. Would you say that? That's a wild guess. But I have no idea what to even guess. Right. I would honestly. say most people don't. The vast majority of most people don't believe in astrology. I'm wondering out there um, who's following us and watching us. Um, what do you believe about that? Do the vast majority of Hindus believe or not believe in astrology? I'm really curious about that. So mm -hmm. welcome to our channel. This is a Path to Dharma podcast. I'm Shannon and this is Shay. I realized we never even introduced ourselves last week. We just started talking and that's okay, but... Um, we do want to welcome you if you're new yes. here. We have been studying the Srimad Bhagavatam. It has been a delight mm. and um, it has already began to transform our lives. And mm. we are here tonight on Canto 1, Chapter 13, Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, and <laughs> um, it's the story's heating up. Let me just say that. We're starting to get into it. We're f physically halfway through the book. Um, we do have this version, Swami Prabhupada. Um, we aren't really reading the purport too much. We will say that. We did read a little bit of it before we started tonight. And here's why. We did not know who the person was immediately <laughs> upon reading the very first text. So mm -hmm. we were like, okay, we do need to look some things up because we are truly coming at this, as many people have noted, without having a deep knowledge of the Mahabharata. So... Um, sometimes we don't know who characters are and we feel like yep. we need a little context because it's obviously going to be important because they're showing right. up here in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So before we recite the Srimad Bhagavatam, however, uh, we do want to do something. Yes. Yes. Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead, Narayan. Unto Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author. I can never find this second part that I've been reading. So am I just... By attending yeah. the regular classes in the Bhagavatam, I'm starting to memorize this. I should be saying this with you. That's just lazy on my part, honestly. I should be saying. And by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service unto the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna 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 Krishna. Krishna. Ah, it's been thank so thankful to have Krishna this week because you know when you're in the thick of it. Uh, in the sense of um, we're, I was talking about astrology because we're leading up to some lunar and solar eclipses that are gnarly going right over the United States and I'm feeling it. And I think everybody's feeling it a little bit. Um, but what I was saying is it's been one of those weeks where I just keep trying to say to myself, perspective, 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 you know, it's like... <laughs> Don't skip the spiritual practices. This is when I need Krishna most, when mm -hmm. he's testing me. And I just, there's no doubt in my mind he's testing us mm -hmm. because it has not been easy things happening around us, in our lives, uh, around us, to the people around us. It's been kind of chaotic, honestly. So, it's so funny though, because even in the midst of the chaos, I just feel like I've been, I've had like this, um, like just like this observer watching it happen. So yeah. like, as much as it does feel crazy and chaotic, it also doesn't at all. It's like such a weird feeling that I've been having. So yeah. strange. <laughs> yeah, I I have that same thing happening. Just after work, I got home and I was trying to just like l l let go of the day. Started, you know, just feeling real emotional about just things happening around me, trying to process my feelings, my coworkers' mm -hmm. feelings, what's happening at work, my house, my family, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I just sat in front of my altar and I started praying and, you know, before I was done, I was just smiling and, and what it was is that I was able to get to that release, that surrender, 
And it's coming faster and faster. I'll say that. Mm -hmm. Like the more I go to it, the easier it is for me to allow myself to go to it because that's what it is. Cause Krishna has not gone anywhere, <laughs> you know? Right. It's like me, like, okay, the game, it's the game. Okay. It's like release, like, okay. Perspective, this too shall pass all the things that you say when the energy is tough, you know, your day is hard. So, uh, I'm so grateful to be able to do this. And, um, even though sometimes it's like, um, it's a thing we have to do. So I don't want to call it a task because it is a joy and I really do like doing it. Nevertheless, energetically, it is a thing that we have to carry out mm -hmm. after sometimes a tough day. So mm -hmm. it's a thing you um, have planned and have to somewhat prepare for energetically, right. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and that's it. So, um, but the process of doing so, okay, knowing I'm coming to do this, I say to myself, it's extra important that I lose my day. It's extra important that I ground myself. It's like extra important that I connect with Krishna right now mm. so that what I'm reading can really be what he wants me to know because my ego gets really caught up in the day. That's what I was feeling. And when I say ego, I just... By that, I just mean all of the things that we say to ourselves are so important that when we get down to it, it is the daily things that we do that are important in our life. But that's, mm. it's like what really is important. We often have to get to crisis mode before we get to figure that out. Mm. And I don't want to go to a crisis mode. Thank you very much. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd rather go to bliss. I know where to find it and I will go there. And that feels like such a blessing in my life today. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to say Hare that. Thank, Krishna. thank you for this experience of doing this with me, Shay. If you, Hare Krishna. Even if it was ever just you and I that ever watched I know. a single video, I'm so grateful. Hare and to Krishna. those who are with us, yes, Hare Krishna, because um, we would definitely not be doing this without his promptings and without his guidance and direction and inspiration and uh, the joy that he's filling us when we do it is definitely what we're getting <laughs> you know the knowledge mm -hmm. the wisdom all of the interaction with you beautiful souls that are joining us my dear friends let's get into chapter with that 13. being no. said canto one chapter 13 text <clears throat> one sri suta goswami said while traveling on pilgrimage, Vidura received knowledge of the destination of the self from the great sage Maitreya, and then returned to Hasinapur. He became as well versed in the subject as he desired. Okay, so can I just briefly stop now? And we won't keep stopping, I promise. Mm -hmm. um, we did not know who Vidura was. Vidura. Though, though I've heard his name before. Yes, yes, surely. yes. Yeah. Um, so we did look it up and for anyone who maybe, perhaps, maybe many of you, sounds like I know many of you have read all this and know all this, <laughs> but right. just, if you would just placate us for a second here, um, if Shay could just read a little thing about who this is, maybe you're going through the Bhagavatam with us for the first time too. Um, so we want to just put a little perspective of who this is, because we know this is going to be going to be an important character. Just the fact that Sutta Goswami brings him up. Right. <laughs> Just that alone makes us know, okay, who is this? Yeah. So in the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Verdura plays a significant role in the dialogue between Maharaja Brixit and Sage Shuka Devo Goswami. Uh, Verdura, having renounced his position and wealth, embarks on a pilgrimage to various holy places to seek spiritual wisdom. Upon learning about King Parikshit's imminent death due to a curse, Vidura returns to Hastinapur to meet his brother, Dhritarashtra, and deliver important spiritual okay. teachings. Okay. Okay. When he, do you think that's enough or should I continue? Maybe a little bit more, a tiny bit more. <clears throat> Let's see. When, well, actually, the rest is going to be in, in here, I think. But okay. Vidura's teachings uh, serve as a prelude to the main narrative of the Srimad Bhagavatam which resolves around the phil philosophical discussions between King Pariksit and Sukadeva Goswami regarding all the things that they talk about. Okay, um, perfect, perfect. That's yeah. a good, yeah, I think that's plenty. Okay, so that's who this is that we're talking mm -hmm. to, that yeah. Sutta Goswami brings up. Okay, text two. After asking various questions and becoming established in the transcendental loving service of Lord Krishna, Vidura retired from putting questions to Maitreya, Muni, Maitreya, 
What's the pronunciation? Matreya, I think. Matreya. Matreya Mooney. Yeah. Um, when they saw, nope, text three and four. Did I skip one? No. Oh, okay. Text three and four. When they saw Vidura return to the palace, all the inhabitants, Maharaja Yudhistra, his younger brothers, Jodhrashtra, Satyaki, Sanjaya. <laughs> wow. Do you want to do half of these? Um, <laughs> Kripakara, Kunti, Gandhari, Draupadi, Sup Subdara, Uttara, Kirpi, and many yeah. other wives of the Karavas and other ladies with children. I need to practice saying all the names. They are, you did they're great. amazing, beautiful names. They are. Um, all hurried to him in great delight. It so appeared that they had regained their consciousness after a long period. So they mm. are really happy to see him. And we know yep. who all those people are. We definitely know who all those people are. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Text five. With great delight, they all approached him as if life had returned to their bodies. They exchanged obeisances and welcomed, welcomed each other with embraces. Right? Because they had just been through so much. The war had just ended. Drop oh, yeah. killed. Right. So and and then um a beloved, uncle shows, up. A beloved yeah. uncle shows up and he's alive and well. Yeah. Yes, alive and well and coming with spiritual knowledge. They know he's been on pilgrimage, so I'm sure they're looking forward to hearing yeah. what he to say as well. Definitely. Text six. Due to anxieties and long separation, they all cried out of affection. King Yudhisthira then arranged to offer sitting accommodations and a reception. After Vidura ate sumptuously and took sufficient rest, he was comfortably seated. Then the king began to speak to him, and all who were present there listened. Maharaja Yudhisthira said, My uncle, do you remember how you always protected us, along with our mother, from all sorts of calamities? Your partiality, like the wings of a bird, saved us from poisoning and arson. So he was a good protector of them, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Text nine. While traveling on the surface of the earth, how did you maintain your livelihood? At which holy places and pilgrimages, pilgrimage sites did you render service? My Lord, devotees like your good self are verily holy places personified because you carry the personality of Godhead within your heart. You turn all places into places mm. of pilgrimage. I love that. That's mm. so true. Mm. Mm. I said we weren't going to stop, but let me just like double snap on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's love nice. That. That's nice. Text 11. My uncle, you must have visited Dwarka. In the holy place are our friends and well-wishers, the descendants of Yadu, who always wrapped in the service of Lord Sri Krishna. You might have seen them or heard about them. Are they all living happily in their abodes? Text 12. Thus being questioned by Maharaja Yudhisthira, Mahatma Vidura gradually described everything he had personally experienced, except news of the annihilation of the Yadu dynasty. <clears throat> this is where I'm slightly confused about how don't they know. Right. That's all. Um, but that's... Uh, that's maybe... Because okay. everyone because everyone in Dwarka has perished at this point? Or is that not what he's even talking about? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> so maybe it's going to be obvious as he goes on, and it could be. Please forgive our ignorance, dear listener. Um, We're going to keep going, though. Just let's keep yes. going. Okay, so he's not going to tell them about the uh, annihilation of the Yadu dynasty. Okay. Compassionate Maha, Mahatma Vidura could not stand to see the Pandavas distressed at any time. Therefore, he did not disclose this unpalatable and unbearable incident because calamity has come to their own accord. Thus, Mahatma Vidura, being treated just like a godly person by his kinsmen, remained there for a certain period just to rectify the mentality of his oldest brother and in this way bring happiness to all the others. Yeah, I'm, I'm just slightly confused about that. Mm -hmm. Same Z's. <laughs> um, yeah, I need to figure that out. I'm sure people, people, please explain if you know. What... Okay, well, isn't the Yadu dynasty Krishna's dynasty? Can you at least look up what is? Ooh. Yeah, let me look that up. 
Because if that's what it is, then that's what he's referring to. Because we know how Krishna basically like everyone dies in they all basically like kill each other, I believe. It could, they go crazy. It's basically part of the whole plan as we read um, in other places. Like that's the whole plan is he's supposed to come down. The war happens. He's cleansing the earth. Everyone's supposed to die. That's the plan all along. Obviously, while you're the ha inhabitant. <laughs> right, right. That's, you know, obviously quite intense while you're experiencing it. Okay, this says the Yadavas, including Lord Krishna, are said to have perished in a fratiscoto, I don't know this word, in a war that erupted among them as a result of a curse pronounced by the sage Vishwamitra. Yes. Did that happen in the last text? Uh, it, I don't know that we've read about it yet, but I remember reading this. I do remember reading this of why this happens, but I read about it in a Purana. So that's where I'm like mm. not sure. Okay. Um exactly where this um where in the um timeline the story is. So apparently that's already happened. Okay, so okay. I what so that's what it was. It was Krishna's whole basically his dynasty. Everyone is everyone dies. Basically. Yes. Basically. The, and so not some of the women and children, I think, make it. I'm not sure. Nevertheless, maybe the commenters know. I don't want to keep going on about this, but let's it just- It don't make sense. What's been happening, I feel like, is like, if I don't understand something, um, as soon as we post it, I seem to understand. So that might just happen again. Yeah, true, true. You know? Okay, okay. Text, te let's go. Text 15. As long as Vidura played a part of a sudra being cursed by Manduka Muni- Arya Aryama officiated at the post of Yamaraja to punish those who committed sinful acts. And this was the whole curse thing that we were discussing before we got on here. Mm, okay. Right? Correct? Yes. Yeah. Having won his kingdom and observed the birth of one grandson competent to continue the noble tradition of his family, Maharaja Yudhishthira reigned peacefully and enjoyed uncommon opulence in cooperation with his younger brothers, who were all expert administrators to the common people. Text 17. Insurmounta insurmountable eternal time imperceptibly overcomes those who are too much attached to family affairs and are always engrossed in their, in, in their thought. It's like we were just talking about slightly before we even came on here. This is what's going on. Yeah. Um, you do get engrossed. You get ridiculously engrossed in it. Yeah. All sorts of attachments and like sufferings that you create for your own self in the middle of all that. Go to text 18, Jay. Mahatma Vidura knew all this and therefore he addressed Dhritarashtra saying, my dear king, Please get out of here immediately. Do not delay. Just see how fear has overtaken you. This frightful situation cannot be remedied by any person in this material world. My Lord, it is the Supreme Personality of Godhead as eternal time, Kala, that has approached us all. Whoever is under the influence of Supreme Kala, or eternal time, must surrender for his dear, for his most dear life. And what to speak of other things, such as wealth, honor, children, land, and home. Your father, brother, well-wishers, and sons are all dead and passed away. You yourself have expended the major portion of your life. Your body is now overtaken in invalid invalidity. Yeah, he's in the invalid, invalidity. Okay. And you're living in the home of another. You have been blind from your very birth, and recently you have become hard of hearing. Your memory is shortened and your intelligence is disturbed. Your teeth are loose, your liver is defective, and you are coughing up mucus. Paints a pick. Picture that. He's, he's like, die now. Yeah. Alas, how powerful are the hopes of a living being to continue his life. Verily, you are just living, you are living just like a household dog and are eating remnants of food given by Bhima. Ouch. 
There is no need to live a degraded life and subsist to the charity of those whom you tried to kill by arson and poisoning. You are insulted. You also insulted one of their wives and usurped their kingdom and wealth. Despite your unwillingness to die and your desire to live even at the cost of honor and prestige, your miserly body will continue, will certainly dwindle and deteriorate like an old garment. He is also undisturbed who goes to an unknown, remote place and freed from all obligations. Quits he is, his he is yeah. called undisturbed. He is called undisturbed who goes to an unknown remote place and freed from all obligations, quits his material body when it has become useless. Wow. That's like harsh words. He's kind of speaking to him right there a little bit. Kind of. Keep going. I'm so interested. I was yeah. not expecting this. Right. He is certainly a first class man who awakens and understands either by himself or from others, the falsity and misery of this material world, and thus leaves home and depends fully on the personality of Godhead residing within his heart. I mean, he's almost saying that he should be doing what Perkset was doing on he the kind of of Ganges. Please, therefore, leave for the North immediately without letting your relatives know, for soon that time will approach which will diminish the good qualities of men. Thus, Maharaja Dhritarashtra, the scion of the family of Ajamita, firmly convinced by introspective knowledge, broke at once the strong network of familial affection by his resolute determination. Thus, he immediately left home to set out on a path of liberation, as directed by his younger brother, Vidura. Wow! And he does it! Vidura's like... You know what, dear Rashtra? <laughs> like, you're a mess and your body's falling apart and you're going to die. You need to go get liberated because it's not cool what you've done and you need to get it together right now. Yeah. Right yeah. now. And he does. He does. Well, it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Some tough love. A little bit of tough love um, from Fedora. Sometimes it works. Tough love. Let's see what happens. Go to text 30. The gentle and chaste Gandhari, who was the daughter of King Sabala of Kandara, followed her husband, seeing that he was going to the Himalaya mountains, which are the delight of those who have accepted the staff of the renounced order, like fighters who have accepted a good lash from the enemy. <laughs> wow. Of course she goes with him. No surprise. Wow. No wow. surprise. <laughs> we got to go to the Himalayas. I didn't realize the Himalayas were written about in here. He walked off into the Himalayas. Yeah. Text 31. Maharaj Yudhisthir, whose enemy was never born, performed his daily morning duties by praying, offering fire sacrifice to the sun god, and offering obeisances, grains, cows, land, and gold to the Brahmins. He then entered the palace to pay respects to the elderly. However, he could not find his uncles or aunt, the daughter of King Sabala. Maharaj Yudhisthira, full of anxiety, turned to Sanjaya, who was sitting there, and said, Oh, Sanjaya, where is our uncle who is old and blind? Where is my well-wisher, Uncle Vidura, and Mother Gandhari, who was very afflicted due to her son, all her son's demise? My uncle, Dhritarashtra, was also very mortified due to the death of all his sons and grandsons. Undoubtedly, I am very ungrateful. Did he therefore take my offenses very seriously and along with his wife drown himself in the Ganges? When my father Pandu fell down and we were all small children, these two uncles gave us protection from all kinds of calamities. They were always our good well-wishers. Alas, where have they gone from here? You pick it up next time. Sutika Swami said, because of compassion and mental agitation, Sanjaya, not having seen his own master, Dhritarashtra was aggrieved and could not properly reply to Maharaja Yudhisthira. First, he slowly pacified his mind by intelligence and wiping away his tears and thinking of the feet of his master, Dhritarashtra, he began to reply to Maharaja Yudhisthira. Sanjaya said, my dear descendant of the Kuru dynasty, I have no information of the determination of your two uncles and Gandhari. O king, I have been cheated by those great souls. 
While Sanjaya was thus speaking, Sri Narada, the powerful devotee of the Lord, appeared on the scene. Oh, wow. Uh, Sri Narada appears carrying his tamburu. Is this another instrument? What is a tamburu? Maharaja Yudhisthira and his brothers received him properly by getting up from their seats and offering obeisances. Well, as, as you do. So, so Narada shows up. What is going to happen? Text 39, Maharaja Yudhisthira said, Oh, godly personality, I do not know where my two uncles have gone, nor can I find my aesthetic aunt, who is grief-stricken by the loss of all her sons. You are like a captain of a ship in a great ocean and can direct us to our destination. Thus addressed the godly personality, Devarsi Narada, greatest of the philosopher devotees, began to speak. You go ahead. <clears throat> Sri Narada said, O oh, pious king, do not lament for anyone, for everyone is under the control of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, all living beings and their leaders carry on worship to be well protected. It is he only who brings them together and disperses them. Uh, yes. Srinarada is always going to come in. Srinarada. Always going to come <laughs> in. For you. With the wisdom. With the wisdom. Oh my gosh. I love it. Basically, it's like, you know what? It's only going to get better. I I can read. I'm As reading it. Oh, it is good. As a cow bound through the nose by a long rope is conditioned, so also human beings are bound to different Vedic injunctions and are conditioned to obey the orders of the Supreme. As a player sets up and disperses his playthings according to his own sweet will, so the supreme will of the Lord brings men together and separates them. Ah, I am dying up in here. This is so good. And because like... The week that we've had, this is like what we need, right? <laughs> this... yeah. Yes. Okay. Continue. Continue. Oh, king. Oh, king. In all circumstances, whether you consider the soul to be an eternal principle or the material body to be perishable or everything to exist in the absolute, in the impersonal absolute truth or everything to be an inexplicable combination of matter and spirit. Feelings of separation are due only to illusory affection and nothing more. Speak, Narada. Whoa. I love, I just like picture him and I, I don't know if this is what this is saying. I like picture him like in Lotus, literally like floating in. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? He like floats in. He's like, hey, everyone, this is what's actually happening. And he like drops mm -hmm. deep wisdom. I love Sri Narada. Yeah. So good. 45, 45. Therefore, give up your anxiety due to ignorance of the self. You are now thinking of how they who are helpless, poor creatures will exist without you. This gross material body made of the five elements is already under the control of eternal time, action, and the modes of material nature. How then can it be already in the jaws of the serpent? Wow. Wait, how then can it, being already in the jaws of the serpent, protect others? Yes, there you go. Okay. Let's just sit on that for a sec because this is where this is what we're stopping for here. Um, I don't even know what to say. I, <laughs> oh, I just want to, I literally want to jump up and down a few times. This yeah. is like so good. This is it's, so good. Ah. Wow. I love this part. No, this is one, one of the best things I've read. You are now thinking of how they, who are helpless poor creatures, will exist without you. <laughs> it's so true. How often do I do that? <laughs> I love everything here. Please keep going. <laughs> oh, my. Narada, he's not Krishna. done. He's not done. He's not done. Keep going. Those who are devoid of hands are prey for those who have hands. Those devoid of legs are prey for the four-legged. The weak are the substance of the strong. And the general rule holds that one living being is food for another. Yikes. Whoa. He is like, wait a second. That's like some deep, just that, just that alone. I feel like you could do a whole entire four hours on. What was that? I'm going to keep going. Therefore, O King, you should look to the Supreme Lord only, who is one without a second mm. and who manifests himself by different energies and is both within and without. That Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna, in the guise of all devouring time, has now descended on earth 
to eliminate the envious from the world. I mean, that's deep. That's big that that's happening. He reminds them. The Lord has already performed his duties to help the demigods, and he's awaiting the rest. You Pandavas may wait as long as the Lord is here on earth. Okay. So he's like, well, Krishna's done. You guys can wait, stay with him. But like he came, what he, came to do what he needed to do, and he did it. And he did it, and everything is acting as it's supposed to. Everything you is. You can't find them for a reason. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. What a beautiful way to say that. Ah, uh, O King, your uncle, Dhritarashtra, and his brother, Vidura, and his wife, Gandhari, have gone to the southern side of the Himalayan, Himalayan mountains, where there are shelters of the great sages. So there they go, into a cave. Yeah. They're going to the cave. Mm -hmm. Going to find a sage in a cave. <laughs> right? Okay, That's you you pick it up. On to, yeah. The place is called Saptra. Sapta Srota, divided yeah. by seven, because there the waters of the sacred Ganges were divided into seven branches. This was done for the satisfaction of the of the seven great rishis. On the banks of Sapta Srota, Dhritarashtra is now engaged in beginning Ashtanga yoga by bathing three times daily, in the morning, noon, and evening, by performing the Agni Hotra sacrifice with fire and by drinking only water. This helps one control the mind and the senses and frees one completely from thoughts of familial affection. Yeah. One who has controlled the sitting postures, the yogic asanas, and the breathing process, process can turn the senses towards the absolute personality of Godhead and thus become immune to the contaminations of the modes of material nature, namely mundane goodness, passion, and ignorance. Yes, please. <laughs> Dhritarashtra will have to amalgamate his pure identity with intelligence and then merge into the supreme being with knowledge of his qualitative oneness as a living entity with the supreme Brahman. Did I say all that right? Yeah. Yeah. Being freed from the blocked sky, he will have to rise to the spiritual sky. Oh, I like that. He will have to assist. He will have to suspend all the actions of the senses, even from the outside, and will have to impervious be and have to be impervious to interactions with the senses, which are influenced by the modes of material nature. After renouncing all material duties, he will become immovably established beyond all sources of hindrance on the path. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I was just oh. wondering about Gandhari. Oh king, he will quit his body. Most probably on the fifth day from today, and his body will turn to ashes. While outside observing her husband, who will burn in the fire of mystic power, along with his thatched cottage, his chaste wife will enter the fire with rapt attention. Okay, that's what I wondered. She walks into the fire with him. She goes with him. Yep. Yep. Vidura being affected with delight and grief will then leave that place of sacred pilgrimage. Mm. Yeah. Having spoken thus, the great sage Narada, along with his vinya, ascended into outer space. Ah! Yudhisthira kept his instructions in his heart, and so he was able to get rid of all lamentations. Ugh. Thus ending the first canto, 13th chapter of the Sri Mag Bhagavatam. I love that. Jitarashtra quits home. I mean, I sometimes will um, imagine... Sri Narada like floating in on me and I know they say he can't come to Kali Yoga and I'm like literally no one but like <laughs> just reading about him doing it lets him lets that happen in some yeah. weird way for me does that make sense like no yeah it totally does I'm blown away by this chapter yeah. I just feel like there's so much yeah here we could talk so much about like quitting the familiar familial affection yeah. Um, and yet his wife and his brother go along with him, right? And his wife enters the fire with him. And so there's just so much you could say and so much you could talk about here. I, I don't even know, like that needs to sink in. It's like we need videos of us watching <laughs> videos, re know. reacting to our own videos now that we have like some sense of like can talk about it. Because right now, like I'm stunned. Yeah. I'm stunned by all of that everything that Narada just said and I'm just like gathering this sense of 
Jodorostra kind of in the beginning to me was like, you know, the good versus evil type yeah. of thing. And like, no, he actually served his role exactly as yeah. he was supposed to. And like he said, Lord Sri Krishna came down and, and made all of this happen. Right. Um, and it took all of these people playing all these different roles and we're yes. all just one anyway. And it's an illusionary effect to think that we're different. And it is just wild. That's kind of just blowing my mind, like eternally, internally, that's kind of all clicking together that like, yeah, Jutarashtra, the blind king isn't, isn't necessarily the evil one. And look, he still reaches liberation. Like he still goes to the right Himalayas and seeks refuge from the sages and decides to quit his own body being absolutely absorbed in the absolute truth of Lord Sri Krishna. Like that yeah. is mind blowing. This is all I mind blowing. Mean- isn't he us? Aren't we the blind king? Like, aren't we the ones that are blind? And this is us, our spiritual darkness. And we have to come to a point where we do either physically lose the body or and go to the divine or choose to to energetically, to spiritually go through the process of what Jodorowsky is going through right now to be able yeah. to reach divinity here on earth, it feels like, right? To be able to mm-hmm. get to that point that we want to get to where we can touch the divine. We have to do all these things. And like, maybe we don't need it to be that we're half dead and we're falling apart and our teeth are loose and we're about to die. And we're like blindly hobbling off to do all the rights we can, like before we die. But actually, like you said, that's exactly what he was supposed to do. But it just makes me feel like this, this thought of like, even just that scene, just he's gone now. And like the rest of his family back at the palace like n- no goodbyes, like no like things to say. Like he up and went and left and like saved his soul and meet you guys in heaven later. <laughs> it's like like I'm not even yeah. sorry about it if that happens to me, my yeah. family. Yeah, right. Know that especially about me. especially if Narada like drops in to like tell me where you're at. If Narada drops in, like, on, like shit. that's icing on the cake. <laughs> that's right. icing on the cake. Narada didn't even have to come and tell them that. No, I know. Amazing. Like, how does he just randomly show up and like have beautiful things to say? I love that. That how was do we, so good. How do we summon him here? I just talked about we already do. We already can in our brain, in our brains, in our hearts. And I mean, right now, reading about him. Yeah. Oh, the next chapter is called The Disappearance of Lord Sri Krishna. Yes. Are we, we're reading it. We're going forward. Are we going? Are we doing it? What do you think? Let's read it. Let's do it. Chapter 14, The Disappearance of Lord Krishna. Sri Sutta Goswami said, Arjuna went to Dwarka to see Lord Sri Krishna and other friends and also to learn from the Lord of his next activities. A few months passed. Arjuna did not return. Maharaja Yudhisthira then began to observe some inauspicious omens, which were fearful in themselves. He saw that the direction of eternal time had changed, and this was very fearful. There were disruptions in the seasonal irregularities. The people in general had become very greedy, angry, and deceitful, and he saw that they were adopting foul means of livelihood. Of course, Lord Sri Krishna leaves. He's gone, but they don't know he's gone yet. They don't know yet. But they're just seeing the effects yeah. of his leaving Earth. Right. And do you remember Arjun sees that whole scene? He sees that he's there for that. That whole scene where everyone dies, right? So that's why that's where he's at. And so you just hear is back at the kingdom where everything's been going great. We already read earlier, like how all the inhabitants are like happy and productive and like right. have everything, right? All ordinary transactions and dealings became polluted with cheating, even between friends. And in familial affairs, there was always misunderstanding between fathers, mothers, and sons, between well-wishers and between brothers. Even between husband and wife, there was always strain and quarrel. In course of time, it came to pass that people in general became accustomed to greed, anger, pride, etc. Maharaja Yudhisthira, observing all these omens, spoke to his younger brother. You pick it up on six. Maharaja Yudhisthira said to his younger brother, Bhimasena, I sent Arjuna to, to Dwarka to meet his friends and to learn from the personality of Godhead Krishna of his program of work. Since he departed, seven months have passed, yet he has not returned. I do not know factually how things are going there. Is he going to quit his early past, his earthly pastimes, as Devarsi Narada indicated? Has that time already arrived? Right. From him only, all our king opulence, good wives, lives, progeny, 
control over our subjects, victory over our enemies, and future accommodations in higher planets have become possible. All this is due to his causeless mercy upon us. Right. Just see, O oh man, with the tiger's strength, how many miseries due to celestial influences, earthly reactions, and bodily pains, all very dangerous in themselves, are foreboding danger in the near future by deluding our intelligence. The left side of my body, my thighs, arms, and eyes are all quivering again and again. I am having heart palpitations due to fear. All this indicates undesirable mm. happenings. It's like red flags going off like crazy for him. He's like, our June's not back. Everyone's being crazy and mean and awful. What is happening? Just see, Obima, how the sheet jackal cries at the rising sun and vomits fire and how the dogs bark at me fearlessly. Obima Sina, tiger amongst men. Now useful animals like cows are passing me on my left side and lower animals like the asses are circumambulating me my horses appear to weep upon seeing me just see this pigeon is like a messenger of death the shrieks of the owls and their and their rival crows make my heart tremble it appears that they want to make they want to make a void in the whole universe mm. just see how the smoke encircles the sky it appears that the earth and the mountains are throbbing just hear the cloudless thunder and see the bolts from the blue. Hmm. The wind blows violently, blasting dust everywhere and creating darkness. Clouds are raining everywhere with bloody disasters. The rays of the sun are declining and the stars appear to be fighting amongst themselves. Confused living entities appear to be ablaze and weeping. Yeah. Rivers, tributaries, ponds, reservoirs, and the mind are all protrubed. Perturbed. Pert perturbed? Perturbed. 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 Yeah. Butter no longer ignites fire. What is this extraordinary time? What is going to happen? The cows do not suck the teats of the cows, nor do the cows give milk. They are standing, crying, tears in their eyes, and the bulls take no pleasure in pasturing grounds. Oh. <laughs> The deities seem to be crying in the temple, lamenting and perspiring. They seem about to leave. All the cities, villages, towns, gardens, mines, and hermitages are now devoid of beauty and bereft of all happiness. I do not know what sort of calamities are now awaiting us. Mm. I think that all these earthly disturbances indicate some greater loss to the good fortune of the world. The world was fortunate to have been marked with the footprints of the lotus feet of the Lord. These signs indicate that this will no longer be. Yeah. Text oh, Bra go ahead. You go. Text 22. Oh, Brahmana Sanaka. While Maharaja Yudhishthir, observing the inauspicious signs on the earth at that time, was thus thinking to himself, Arjun came back from the city of the Yadus. When he bowed at his feet, the king saw that his dejection was unprecedented. His head was down and tears glided from his lotus eyes. Seeing Arjuna pale due to heartfelt anxieties, the king, remembering the indications of the sage Narada, questioned him in the midst of friends. Mahara Maharaja Yudhish Yudhishthir said, My dear brother, please tell me whether our friends and relatives such as Madhu, Boja, Dasara, Ahra, Satava, Sat Satvata, and Ardaka, Andaka, and Aka and the members of the Yadu family are all passing their days in happiness. It is my respectable grandfather. Is my. Is my respectable, respectable grandfather, Surasena, in a happy mood. And are my maternal uncle, Vasudeva, and his younger brothers all doing well? His seven wives, headed by Devaki, are all sisters. Are they and all their sons and daughter-in-laws happy? Our Ugrasena, whose son was the mischievous Kamsa and his younger brother still living. Our, our, I can't say that one at all. Hardika? Our, our Hardika and his son Kurtavama, happy. Our, our Kura, Janyea, Gada, Sarana, and Satruchit, all happy. How is Balarama, the personality of Godhead and the protector of devotees? 
How is Prati Yumna, the great general of the Vrishni family, is he happy? And is Anuruddha, the planetary expansion of the personality of Godhead, faring well? Are the chieftains and the sons of Lord Krishna, such as Susana, Kard Karudensa, Karudesna, Samba, the son of Jambavati, and Rushba, along with their sons, all doing well? You can pick it up from there, Shay, 2032. Also, Sruta Deva, Udava, and others, Nanda, Sanda, Sananda, and other leaders of the liberated souls who are constant companions of the Lord are protected by Lord Balarama and Krishna. Are they all doing well in their respective functions? Do they, who are all eternally bound in friendship with us, remember our welfare? Is Lord Sri Krishna the supreme personality who gives pleasure to the cows, the senses, and the Brahmins, who is very affectionate towards his devotees, enjoying the pious assembly at Dwarka Puri, surrounded by friends? The original personality of Godhead, the enjoyer, and Balarama, the prim primeval Lord Ananta, are staying in the ocean of the Yadu dynasty for the welfare, protection, and general progress of the entire universe. And the members of the Yadu dynasty, being protected by the arms of the Lord, are enjoying life like the residents of the spiritual sky. Simply administering comforts at the lotus feet of the Lord, which is the most important of all services, the queens at Dwarka, headed by Satyabhama, induced the Lord to conquer the demigods. Thus the queens enjoy things that are prerogat prerogatives. Okay prerogatives of the wives of the controller of thunderbolts. The great heroes of the Yadu dynasty, being protected by the arms of Lord Sri Krishna, always remain fearless in every aspect, and therefore their feet trample over Sundara, Sudharma, assembly house, which the best demigods deserved, but which was taken away from them. My brother Arjuna, please tell me whether your health is all right. You appear to have lost your bodily luster. Is this due to others disrespecting and neglecting you because of your long stay at Dorka? Has someone addressed you with unkind, unfriendly words or threatened you? Could you give not could you not give charity to one who asked, or could you not keep your promise to someone? You are always the protector of the deserving living beings, such as Brahmins, children, cows, women, and the diseased. Could you not give them protection when they approach you for shelter? Have you contacted a woman of impeachable character? Or have you not properly treated a deserving woman? Or have you been defeated on the way by someone who is inferior or equal to you? Have you not taken care of old men and boys who deserve to dine with you? Have you left them and taken your meals alone? Have you committed some unpardonable mistake which is considered to be abominable? Or is it that you are feeling empty for all time because you might have lost your most intimate friend, Lord Krishna? Oh, my brother Arjuna, I can think of no other reason for your becoming so dejected. That's the uh, end. Uh, it's like he wanted, he asked him every question in the hopes that it was one of those things. Knowing, yeah. actually, no, that's, that was the only thing that really actually could have happened to have Arjuna feel this way. Uh, these chapters are kind of like the week a little bit. There's a lot going on here. So, wow. <clears throat> um, I need Narada to like float in and have a beautiful little song to sing <laughs> me right now. <laughs> uh, and the whole thing of it is, is, is like, this is just setting the groundwork. Like this first chapter is just setting the groundwork. Like everything that we think is so intense that's happening yeah. is like just setting the groundwork to like yeah. all the knowledge that's to come. Well, I do know and still feel the allegorical nature of what we're reading about and um, have felt and I've talked about feeling that spiritual darkness before. So mm -hmm. it does feel devastating to lose. Um what feels so light, what feels yeah. like knowledge and source and energy and like love and, you know, everything that Krishna must have represented. So 
most of the time it's because we've turned, you know, our self away. And I feel, I feel that pain that they're feeling right now in this because it's, it's devastating to not have that when you've yeah. had it, to feel like you've had it and then to not have it. Ugh. And, you know, the whole thing that Narada said, though, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like on the one hand, I'm feeling all the grief and pain, but like Narada floated in. Remember? He's like, hey, everyone. Remember? Yeah. Remember everything? And like how actually like Krishna's in charge and like you're only here because of him and like it's fine. Everything is fine. Actually, everything is fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Narada. So I feel that. I feel that and I'm so grateful that um I'm so grateful that Krishna has that happen. Holy that he dispatched fucking... it that he dispatched Narada for that. Like I'm grateful for all of the agents that Krishna dispatches um as my teachers, as the people that are um giving me consternation, as the ones that are challenging me, as the ones that I love, as the ones, you know, all of those people are being sent my way from Krishna because he is the one that brings people together and separates people. That's what we just read. And that's deep. That is deep. Broadcasing live from Kali Yuga. <laughs> live from Kali Yuga. Shay uh, and Shannon. Shannon and Shay. Here we are. Thank you so much for Three being with Bhagavad. us in the Kali Yuga. How's it going for you? <laughs> we want to know. Love um, and light and Hare Krishna. The all yeah. beings out there in Kali Yuga. Yes, for sure. We send you that. And we thank you for joining us. We thank you for all your beautiful comments and likes and all the things. So I'm I'm going to be spending days thinking about yeah. this. Yeah. Wow. 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 Okay. I think that's it. So thank you so much. And we will see you next week. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I'm glad it was we, too good. I'm glad we kept reading. Wow. So good. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.